It's funny, I traveled all the way from the Caribbean Sea to hear the sound of steel pan drums for the first time in years here on the 38th latitude north. Thanks to the U.S. Virgin Islands Tourism Commission for providing some brilliant musical soundtrack to this video. The Annapolis Boat Show was in full swing, with boats small and large on display, an extravaganza of well-known brands showing and telling. The goal here was quite clear, to sell, sell, sell. And I knew what I had to do too. I tried to board every vessel I could, seizing and stealing ideas for my own project sailboat back home, trying to see if there were any simple and practical ideas here among the luxury and opulence. But first, we needed to go for a sail. <laughs> Sean of Cruisers Academy knew some friendly folks with a cute little Beneteau, so we piled on and took off into the Chesapeake. Let me know when you're ready. Adam and Liz, the proprietors of the vessel, gently led us out onto the shallow and muddy-looking waters as the wind began to fill in, and we were quickly able to hoist the mainsail. I love the cozy interior of this 1994 little Beneteau First 310. The fleet of Navy sailboats were out racing on the water as well. We were dodging the notoriously prevalent crab traps of the area. You're blocking my shot. Right, You're blocking the whole view. Again. And I was dodging sails and boom between the smoothly maneuvered jibes. It looks like super vo vode. Ready? It's like a banana. The wind was getting fresher as we went along until eventually it seemed like maybe even too sporty to keep my camera gear out. It was its first time sailing and out on the deck. Yay, everybody in 
not a photograph. Yes. <laughs> and then it was gently back into the slip again. Back at the show, I was all about the small boats. We ran at about four and a half knots for about three hours. Four and a half knots, three hours. And so we needed another battery. And how... I shouldn't say how heavy is she, how light is she? The boat? Yeah. The boat's 1,500 pounds. Okay. There were a lot of larger, more comfortable, deluxe-type sailboats to tour, with longer lineups to wait in as well. So I decided to stop by something closer to what I used to live and sail on. This J9 looked like a modern, cockpittier version of my way the little cruiser racer that Robbie and I shared as a home for two years. I just slightly don't have standing headroom. But she's got all of the basic necessities that one needs to cruise and race. Minus some of those more galley kind essentials, but it had some room to add those things on the starboard side. Great little spot for galley, except it doesn't have a galley. It doesn't have a... A little propane stove. Only thing that's missing. Now moving up a little in size to the Italia yacht, which reminds me of Rosa, another sailboat project that my husband and I lived on, but only similar in the sense that it's almost the same size. Very lightweight and fast. This is our racing. This is our beast. Fiberglass, I mean it's a light, it's a light beast is what it is. The theme is completely open cockpits. I think there's a theme here. Uh, my name's Ing Keeland. Ing was very nice to give me a tour of the Italia yacht. However, the wind blew out most of the exterior sound. So here's what he let me know. She's a 34-footer made in Italy in 2016. She draws 6 feet 2 inches, usually planes around 14 knots, and actually comes with 12 sails. So you won't need to delay to leave the dock with this boat. What I like about vessels like this is being able to understand how to access all the components of the vessel that will eventually need repair. Ease of wiping down and cleaning, ease of access to all the hardware. These are the kinds of things that give me peace of mind. Plus, going fast is also fun. Super shallow bilge, super racy, super shallow. The head is quite large actually. And it goes right back under the cockpit. I like this concept. The head opens directly into what we call the man cave, uh, the uh, cockpit locker area. Okay, so I'm in the cockpit locker. I'm like directly under the cockpit and I can move, I can crawl. I can get into the entire space of the boat, if you can hear over the waves. It's done the Mackinac race in Michigan just this summer. Okay. So it's rated and um, it's got a, um, it's just got beautiful lines and we've had a lot of great success with it. And we hope to sell more in the near future on the East Coast, down West. Um, so yeah, my name is Ian Keelan. I'm with David Walters Yachts and I hope you enjoy this little tiny tour. This boat really caught my eye just with the, the simple lines, everything very 
very minimalistic. I, I think that's where the beauty is, yeah. is, the, is the minimalism. Now moving into the realm of even fancier boats, but also very racy, is the Elan E4. The boat concerned me with some of the deck hardware, such as the running back, or rather the backstay, which attached only with four small little bolts, and the tow choppers, which seem to appear on several other boats at the show as well. I didn't detect one creak while descending the ladder into the boat. And I like the devoted space to hanging foul weather clothing in the head. The Elan GT6 is the larger, almost 50-foot version, but it is bigger, so they wouldn't let me go on it at the time. I'm sure it looked very nice inside, too. I heard once that the X-Yachts are pretty lavish as well. The two on display here seem to be... And oh, I guess the big 50-footer is off-limits to me for now as well. I suppose I'll just check out the smaller 40-footer instead. We got rod rigging going on here. I have nothing against rod rigging, only that it's more complicated to inspect on your own, as cracking or failing rod is almost impossible to detect by eye. And that furler looks particularly difficult to service. I'm sure it's very convenient though. Oh, yeah. oh, that's, that, yeah, that's... Hmm, some more toe choppers. I'm not quite sold on those yet. I don't know about Scott. I don't know if he's on a place to. Because I tell you, I'm going to take them. Great. I promise I just can't build them fast. I know, I know. Yeah, I think you can come up. Great. That's what happened. I like how they keep everything procedural. Oh, it's yeah. all procedural. I like that. Yeah. Exactly. That's beautiful. Having cleaned quite a few boats in my past and current line of work, a lot of touring of these vessels, I have to admit, is basically me imagining having to clean salt water, food, or worse, off of all of the surfaces. I might be secretly raiding all these boats with that in mind most heavily. Check out, Marie, check out that paper. Onto a boat that is very similar to the other vessels I already looked at, except for the fact that it has an electric motor inside. I checked out the smaller electric boat of the two. Unlike most of the other vessels I visited at the show, the engine was running at the dock in order to demonstrate to visitors how clean and silent the ocean vault can be. I really don't want to walk on these. They're meant to walk on, but I really don't want to do it. I don't trust it. The engine is on. I can hear the light humming. It's 
So this will be the only tour so far that I do have a boat where the engine is on. And you can hear me talking over it. These impressive lithium ion batteries sure are something probably very efficient compared to the automotive style lead acid kind that I have powered all my onboard electronics for years with and that I have personally found very easy to recycle though. So the propulsion bank is a 48 volt bank. Okay. Yeah, and the other one over there has two, but right now there's someone from Sail Magazine Okay. Stay tuned for more surprises from the Annapolis Boat Show in the next video. And thank you to all the awesome patrons of this channel.